Oh Canada, oh Canada, my home and native land. No? You're not f***ing Canadian. Yeah, but we're drinking Canadian whiskey. You're fired. So Ryan Shoot brought this to us Ryan, in person. Ryan Shoot in person. You magnificent bastard. Okay, so Gibson's finest. Yes, Ooh. Canadian because I see it. Yes. So you remember our argument about Canadian whiskey? It's that they hoard all the good for themselves. It's not an argument. More. It's a fact. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an established. Objective. So, a week ago, objective fact. I had the honor of meeting Davin uh, de Kermengro, who is... Wait, what did... De Kermengro. Okay, de Kermengro. Yeah, or, oh, sorry, de Kermengro. De Kermengro. I'm guessing. Are you having a stroke right now? I'm having a stroke right now. <laughs> <laughs> Davin de Kermengro. Kermengro. <laughs> Keep going. I am having a stroke. Get, get it. Sorry, Davin. Get it. <laughs> Now, Davin is considered the leading, one of the world's leading experts on Canadian whiskey, if not the leading expert on Canadian whiskey, actually wrote the book called Canadian Whiskey. And it's been updated to edition two, right? Okay. This guy gives a shit about Canadian whiskey. Okay. He cares. So, what is his, because we're open, we have open minds. Yes. Open to some amazing Canadian whiskeys. They always feel like, uh, they always leave us a little bit Wanting. That's true. Now he really loves the Crown Royal Reserve. Have I had Crown Royal Reserve? I don't think we have Crown. The, we have Crown Royal, but I don't think we have the Crown Royal Reserve. Is it different than just Crown Royal? Because yes. I've had Crown Royal. I think it is. Hang on a second. So, uh, Davin, I took some of your notes on Gibson. Right. Because Gibson 12 is actually considered to be a really good go-to whiskey for, and it's only available in Canada. Here, let me help you. And uh, it's 12 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 12 years old. Now, originally, this distillery was in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And they're making Pennsylvania rye, and then Prohibition killed them for obvious reasons. Yeah, no, no. And then they moved to Canada. Now they're owned by, I think, Hiram Walker. Yeah. Um, but they're considered to be kind of a go-to gold standard. That's Actually, a... it was bought by Louis Rosenstyle. This is... Now, for the nerds, Louis, Louis Rosenstyl is responsible for a lot of U.S. legislation on bourbon, including getting the bonding area, or bonding age increased long enough to get aged whiskey. You're not tall enough to reach what I'm about to go for. And uh, Louis Rosenstyl is one of my whiskey heroes. If you study his life, he's amazing. So we should compare it to JC, JP Weiser's 18. Yeah. Because it's in my hand. <laughs> no, we're not comparing it to JP Weiser's 18. It's Canadian. JP Weiser's 18. That's 40% though. What is this? 40%. Okay. So the reviews on this. So uh, the. It's the, kind of a fruity and woody note. But yeah, but Davin compared it to cedar. cedar. Red cedar. Wait, is that different than the cedar we have here? Yeah, I think it probably is. We got scrub cedar. Yeah, it's really like It's just a big bush. It's the worst. But the wood's not overpowering. No, it's not. It, it smells and nice. Get, it smells nicely balanced. So here's the thing about Davin. Here's how serious Davin is about tasting and smelling. He will smell and taste the whiskey and take notes, and then he'll do that again over like a week, Ooh. because his opinion is that based on when you try things. Oh, it's absolutely true. Your opinion changes. Absolutely so true. So before he publishes a review, he will spend a whole week on one whiskey. Yeah. That's hard core. You know what's hardcore, <laughs> Davin? <laughs> Cramming. Four reviews into one shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, like true experts. Yes, yes. With our gigantic medallions. I actually really like this. It's a super saturated, it's like a like an alcoholic honey for me. I'm getting the tiniest bit of apple in there. I don't know what Yeah, but that aftertaste does bring in some of the spicy notes. I'm not, I don't but know. But only what, in the aftertaste. I don't have a reference point for red cedar. There's some pepper spice, but only after you've swallowed the whiskey, it comes back and sort of lingers with these sharp spiky notes. You know, the entire presentation from beginning to end, think, think, almost an Irish buttery note. Oh, okay, hang on. 
Yeah, but with more rye. A little bit more rye. So imagine if you took Irish whiskey yeah. and added rye. Mm -hmm. The spicy rye. And uh, you know what? I'm getting, and I feel almost like a racist. I get a little maple. That's the tiniest little bit of maple. Like molasses? Maple? Sure. Yeah. Syrup? Treacle. Treacle. Remember, Treacle. Remember that fiasco? Treacle. Remember, remember. Treacle. <laughs> Treacle. So you know what yeah. I like about this? It's not a thing here. Is it's not that overly bland no, you got Canadian some, club. At 40%, there's a lot more going on here than Yeah, there's a there's a lot more get, complexity. Typically get out of a out of a 40%. I prefer the lot 40. We did a lot 40. I really liked that one. But this is good. I would keep this in the house as just like mm, good go-to pour. Buttery maple. Yeah. And this would be a good introduction into whiskey in general. I'm not finding the peppery finish that you're talking about. Well, how does it feel to be so wrong? Uh, you're just you're broken. Is what that is. A, you're, you're imagining things that don't exist as a human being. <laughs> so let's compare it to the JP Weiser's 18. It's not even a comparison, dude. Canada. It's just because you happened to pull down the JP Weiser's 18. That doesn't count. Canada. Sticks, stones. Nah, I'm not doing that. Not a fan. We'll get something else. Because we're comparing. I don't know what you're comparing to. Canada. You're hearing the class now. We may yeah. or may not get a copyright restriction if if the audio picks that up. <laughs> not a fan of scotch because of the peated taste. Thanks for the find. We'll have to try. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we tried a whiskey. I forgot to prep you on this one. We tried a whiskey and Jimmy Leg made a reappearance. We tried a whiskey and the guy who, <laughs> the guy who commented said, He said, not a fan of scotch. Not a fan of scotch. Because, because of the, the peated taste. But maybe I'll try this one because it's unpeated. It's Thanks the Cool the Eel video. And Jimmy Legg says... I love Jimmy Legg so much. He is the, the best whiskey snob. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like whiskey, try Dalmore. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, oh. Rex, I have a different experimentation I'm going to present. Fine. I'm going to present an Irish whiskey with a hint of rye. Lovely. Because what you said you found was... An Irish whiskey with a hint of rye. Good on you for following my lead. I'm gonna uh, do Willet Rye. Rough connect. Oh, I so can I say this about Willet Rye? I've had this bottle sitting in my house that I rarely dip into, and I tried some Willet Rye over the weekend, and I think I may be turning into a little bit of a rye guy, because I thoroughly enjoyed the Willet that I had. I actually got a little bit of the. Uh, you know, the black tea note that is in Wyoming? Yeah. I was coming fresh off the heels of Wyoming. A little bit of the, the black tea, a little bit of the Holy eucalyptus. Holy crap. Eucalyptus. Is it? I think I just recreated Gibson 12. <laughs> wait, wait. You. Holy crap. Hang on. I you mean, see. I recreated it. Yeah. And you followed my yeah, yeah. lead. Dude. There's a slightly different finish. That's pretty damn close. But I'm within 15%. Slightly different, more butterscotch finish. If it had a little bit more of a little bit more of a butter note, it'd be even closer. Yeah. This has a tiniest bit more apple, and then the Gibson's has a tiny bit more butter. Yeah. So <laughs> what I did was it's the yeah a half ounce of Tullamore Dew 12. Yeah. And about a fourth of an ounce of Willet Rye. Family estate cask. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. They're different. They're different. If you AB them, they are different, but yeah. there's about a 15, 20% difference. I would say tw 20. 20? It's, it's a strong 20. Yeah, it's okay. So I should say the first half is spot on. Yeah. The second half, they both go two different directions. Sure. Rough neck. Okay, so I'm new getting into scotch. Some flavors I can pick out, and there really isn't a big alcohol flavor, but then in other, bo other bottles, uh, mm. All I get is the alcohol, and it's just too strong. Is there a way to get through that? Drink more. So, <laughs> that the doctor prescribed. It's been a while since we talked about this. More liquor. But the thing about, yeah, nice shot. So, the thing about whiskey is if you are, uh, your brain looks for patterns to recognize things and fall in love with things. If you don't have the patterns, your brain won't find anything. So in order to find the patterns, you have to first create the patterns. And you can only do that by drinking and then thinking about it. And eventually what happens is the dominant flavor 
characteristics eventually become background noise and open you up to more subtle notes behind them. It's like living in an apartment next to a highway mm -hmm. or a train. Right. After a certain point, the dominant noise in the environment becomes background to you and you don't hear it anymore. Right. Uh, and then you go camping and you're like, it's too quiet. Right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I equate it to, um, well, there's a lot of different ways to uh, put together a metaphor, but it's kind of like jumping into um, a cold uh, swimming pool or a cold river. Yeah. And then at first, yeah, the only thing you have the bandwidth for is that intense change in temperature. Right. It's just cold and you're not comfortable. But after you've been in there for a while, then all the other stuff that's happening in the water you're aware of. And you can like go down and look and swim and check some stuff out. Yeah. You're just not being overwhelmed by that, that initial rush. Of, I like that. I like the comparison. Yeah, I'm, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> just nod your head. Can I knowing, be a genius too? Knowingly. Well, you got a necklace. Okay. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.